Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I talk about all things luxury and beautiful but only if they bring me joy to current lifestyle as a working mom in her 40s. If this is what interests you, please subscribe to my channel. Today I want to share with you my recent shopping from Hermes. I've always wanted to try more of their beauty makeup range as I was quite impressed with the eyeshadow palette that I got the other time. If you haven't seen that unboxing video, I will link it down below and on the screen. I dropped my NARS palette a while back and the lid hinge broke but I persisted to use the product uh, but the other day I dropped the blush palette again on the floor. And well, this time the cake split in half. I'm still using it and intend to finish the remaining product uh, still inside the case. But I thought it's a good opportunity to try out the blush from Hermes that had been on my wish list for a while. Unfortunately, um, my previous essay has left the store to another job and he handed me over to another essay. So this is the first time I am shopping with this new essay. Um, she was quite lovely, but I'm not sure whether we will click yet. Um, I actually was hoping she would be able to do a trial makeup application for me, but unfortunately, makeup application is not her forte apparently. However, since I got my color analysis done professionally by the lovely ladies at Color Analysis Studio, I will leave their details down below. I'm not in any way affiliated or benefiting from their company. I was just one of the happy customers. So yeah, since now I know I am a true winter color palette, I was able to pick out which blush shade would work best for me. It was quite funny as the essay was recommending a peachy color for me. She probably thought it would complement my Asian skin tone. But I was like, no way. I will try this number 28 Rose Plum instead, as I already did research online. And this color was described as a soft and delicate pink, a misty watercolor refreshed with a subtle hint of blue. Immediately when I tested this in store on my cheeks, it worked beautifully with my undertone. Um, really, I am so glad I did my skin color analysis. Finding the right makeup shades is so much easier nowadays for me. And the funny thing is, it's often not what the SA at makeup boutiques would recommend. But at least the MS SA was very honest and told me out front she's not a makeup artist. Um, so she's forgiven. Whereas um, makeup boutique... Um, the sales there often choose the wrong shades for me. I don't know, maybe my complexion, my overtone and my undertone is quite different and so everyone gets tricked. Um, the case for the blush is refillable, um, or more, more should I say the, the, the content is refillable uh, in this beautiful uh, case i love the size of the case it's a decent size and fits nicely into the palm so hopefully i won't drop this one and break it i would be devastated if i break um, such a nice beautiful case before i needed to refuel before i'm able to use the refuel function of the case now next item is a very special twilly I only have one other Twilly in my collection and that was a blue color scheme. I will put the link down below and on the screen if you missed that unboxing video. I have been thinking of adding an other Twilly into my collection of a lighter color scheme when I want to add a bit of a floral touch to my outfit. I've been browsing on the Hermes online website but just couldn't find any that I like. So it was a bit of a surprise when my SA brought out this one after I have said no to many other patterns available in the store that she was showing me. It was love at first sight with this one and of course it's a special edition with an added premium compared to other Twitties. Now the box um, that it comes in is no different as with other Twitties. Uh, look at this amazing colorway this is the ex libri marble silk twilly i hope i have pronounced it right um libri is a latin word for books um, as i was preparing for this video i fell in love with this scarf even more as it actually is a re and 
I found out later that is a reinterpretation of the original ex libri scarf design by Hugo Gricca back in 1946. Hermes now sells a reissue of the same scarf in the men's section I found out uh, on the website and I'm really thinking about that one as well. Um, that one is in an 80 centimeter size. Um, so you can see here the center medallion is Hermes's house emblem uh, with the stylized initial and, and I didn't know this before so the style the the, the sort of curvy um, sort of pattern in the middle is actually the initial for EMH um, who is one of the heir for the Hermes house um, name is um, Emile Maurice Hermes so that forms the center part of of the emblem and then on top of that you've got the horse carriage waiting for the groom um, and then you've got two staff uh, on opposite sides of the emblem called Caduceus um, it's actually the one that is uh, carried by the Greek god Hermes in mythology now the staff symbolizes peace and commercial transactions um, but it was also later um, accidentally adopted or should I say mistakenly adopted by United States Medical Corps um, as one of their uh, emblems. So they've actually mistaken this caduceus wand that's carried by the Greek god Hermes um, as the rod of Asclepius, which is the rod that is held by the Greek god of medicine. Um, the difference is the rod of Asclepius has only one serpent um, twirling around the, um, the, the rod, whereas um, the one that uh, the Greek god Hermes carries has actually two serpents. Um, I just love the stories behind the symbols and the patterns that Hermes used on the scarves that you can really do a bit of a dig into um, and learn more about um, the background of, of these, um, I guess, art and symbol, which is what I love about um, Hermes and their design. Um, and this made me fall in love with this Twilly even more. Now back to the printing of this scarf. Um, unlike most other Twillies in Hermes, which are made in France, this scarf is actually made in Japan. My essay explained to me that this is because the marble printing technique um, that is used in the production of this scarf is now only available in Japan. The technique is called suminagashi in Japanese, which means floating ink. Now from my reading online, um, this technique actually began in the 12th century in Japan for paper printing and was actually brought to Europe uh, and then artisans there actually started applying the same technique to fabric. Now then what happened was a um, the head of the Nose family in Kyoto uh, was in Germany at that point in time and learned this technique and, to, and brought it back to Japan in 1963. Um, and now it is only the Nose family in Kyoto who can execute this technique on silk apparently worldwide. And I didn't know this before I fell in love with it at first sight and now knowing all about this just made me fall in love with this silk piece even more. I found styling a twilly so easy around my neck, basically just tie a knot or use a twilly ring. Um, so definitely it's one of my go-to when I'm in a rush and want to sort of stylize my plain top a little bit more um, and it's certainly something that uh, can be um, worn at work in a sort of more of an office work environment as well. It's not over the top and it just really style up your outfit.
I'm just comparing with my other Trilly from Hermes. You can see the difference with the branding label placements. The printing, see the gradation of the colors, especially noticeable when the colors change from one to another. The marble print gives it that flowy, whimsical effect. Um, so I have two very opposite styles of Hermes Trilly now in my wardrobe to create different looks. One more soft and whimsical floral feminine look, whereas the other is more of a metallic, cool, chic look. Now I'm now very content and not on the lookout for another Trilly, at least for a little while. This is it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe and thumb up to support my channel. You all take care. Bye.